Hi, screwing along with Susan. I am back with another video. This time I'm going to be doing a 3D puzzle. And I got this out of the Scroll Saw Woodworking and Crafts Magazine, summer 2019. And it's made by A uh, K L I M O V. And it is a pretty nice looking puzzle. It is a dolphin. And there's a large one and a small one. The large one you've got to do on that scroll band saw, but the small one you can do on a regular on a regular scroll saw. Here's a picture of the 3D puzzle that I'm going to be cutting out. And I'm going to be using one and a half squared material. This is pine, and if you want to have an easier experience, use a soft wood like this. So it's one and a half by one and a half. And you need to make sure it's sanded, but you don't have to be really detailed because most of the outside is gonna be cut off and the dolphin is gonna be on the inside. But you do have to make sure that it's squared or will not operate as a proper puzzle. I have decided to use a little bit harder of a wood. This is poplar. You could use walnut, but go for a little medium hard, not super hard, because an inch and a half is an awful thick board to be cutting on a scroll saw. So to attach my puzzle, I have used just clear contact paper on two sides. Then after you cut your puzzle pattern out, right there at the fold has to go right on the edge there so it's equal on both sides. I think sometimes the hardest part of making a scroll saw project is finding the exact size and type of wood that you want to use. I am lucky enough that I have a chop saw and a table saw that I can cut this, but if you don't have access to all of that and you just have like a regular hand saw, you might wanna go with a box store piece of pine that's a two by four because it's actually one and a half inches thick and then you can cut that so that it me measures one and a half inches. But the harder the wood, the harder it is and the slower it is going to be to cut. I am starting with a Pegas 5R modified geometry blade. You may have to go up to a seven. You may have to go with a straight blade with no reverse teeth. You need to really experiment and find out what works best for you. Once you get your blade installed, it is crucial that you are at a 90 degree angle, both on the side and back to front. My first cut is going to be the top profile. So I'm gonna start here at the nose and cut completely around the piece. And I will also be speeding it up because I doubt you wanna watch me do this in real time. Because the wood is an inch and a half thick, it is a challenge to find that right spot to put your hands to offer enough support for that piece of wood. One thing that's kind of important to do every now and then is stop and slide your blade back and forth and that will kind of tell you if you're doing a true cut if it's slide if if it's curved one way or another it won't slide this easy so so far so good you've got nice even pressure you're not holding it so tight to the table that you can't move it but you don't want it bouncing around either and I'm taking this curve very slowly. Cutting this part out, it took me approximately 20 minutes. Then you need to take it apart, get rid of all the excess sawdust, then put it back together, and then we're going to be taping it so that we can cut this side. I just use packing tape and you want to secure it. My blade made it through the whole cut, but it was really struggling at the end. Make sure that you have plenty of blades on hand. It wouldn't surprise me if I used three or four on this piece. So I'm putting in a brand new blade before cutting out this side. Don't forget to tape the whole piece together before cutting the side profile. It's interesting that going with the grain is the most difficult 
parts to cut and the slowest part and when you go against the grain it's a lot easier also it's more difficult to do curves because you want to kind of push which you can't do I have cut the side profile I've taken out the pieces gotten rid of the excess sawdust I'm going to put it all back in use clear tapping excuse me clear packing tape around the entire piece again and I'm ready to cut the individual puzzle pieces out make sure you change your blade that's an awful lot of cutting for those two blades so now on blade number three I'm going to be cutting my first area that's marked number one on this first inside cut I'm going to be coming in at an angle actually straight at 90 degrees to get to that first area that I'm going to be cutting out so it will actually have this little tip of the nose as part of this piece after each numbered piece is cut remove those all the pieces that belong to that number one piece and set them aside before you cut the number two and on and on cut piece number one now I'm going to turn it on its side and cut piece number two I have removed the second piece flip it back over do the third flip it fourth and fifth and then the tail will automatically fall out accuracy is more important on these inside pieces making sure you're not pushing the blade also I probably should have used two blades instead of one because when I got to that fifth piece to cut I felt like it was really slowing down and it probably would have been a lot easier on me if I used two blades this puzzle is only six pieces plus the dowel rod which will hold it all together but it is not exactly easy to do I'm going to take it apart and show you here so it's easy to take apart you start at one turn it sideways for two three is on top four and then five and six and then putting it back together you'd think it would be a little bit easier than it is I mean you got to get it just right or it won't slide in one two six five four whoop I might have flipped that up upside down I did three two and one and I will show you now putting the dowel rod in which holds the pieces together this pattern asks for an eighth of an inch dowel rod all I have is a quarter of an inch I think it's gonna be fine tape it up a little bit so the top part of the head does not move when you're drilling your hole the dowel rod fits but it's pretty tight and I want it to be fairly loose so it's easy to remove so I'm just going to be sanding it down a little bit. I have some 220 grit sandpaper. I'm just going to soften the edges a little bit. I have chosen to finish my pieces with a little bit of silver acrylic paint and some water. So it will just give it a nice little shimmery shine. My little guy is finished. I put a little dab of marker for the eyes on each end of the dowel rod and be careful not to use too thick of paint or too thick of finish or the pieces won't fit. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and might consider one of your own. I think I might put this on the table at the next party and have it as a conversation piece. Thanks for watching.